This is one of the worst things that a personal trainer can do to you. Are you skinny fat with a big tummy and small arms and legs? If that's the body shape you're trying to correct, this video will help you. The skinny fat shape with a big tummy and skinny limbs is actually harder to work with and get good results from than the person who is fat everywhere. I sometimes tell clients who have a good sense of humour that it's such good news that you're fat everywhere, your results are going to be great. But it's true, the person with a skinny fat shape with a big tummy and skinny limbs needs to do more things to get good results than the person who is fat everywhere. Okay, so let's talk about who gets this kind of skinny fat shape. More often than not, it's the middle-aged person. I always say that the body does not lie. Right? A client may lie to me about what time they sleep or what food they eat, but in the end, when a few weeks later we do a measurement, we're going to see if they've been really following a good, healthy lifestyle. When I say the body doesn't lie, it's not just the body shape. It's also other health indicators like how good is your sleep quality, how well are you recovering from exercise, how good is your digestion, do you poop easily every day? Things like that also, the body doesn't lie. If your health is improving, those markers should get better also. So when a person has a skinny fat shape, the body is not lying. We just need to know why they're getting this shape and so we can take steps to correct it. The scary thing is, this shape even happens to people who enjoy exercise and exercise regularly. It even happens to people who try to control their food intake and try to be healthy with their diet. That's why this body shape can be discouraging and frustrating. But in today's video, there'll be multiple things you can do to improve this situation. This video is brought to you by my team and I at Genesis Gym Singapore. For some of the finest personal training both online and offline that takes your holistic health into account, please check out the links below. This body shape indicates that you're probably going to have higher blood sugar levels. High blood sugar, you tend to store fat around your waist and tummy. This is of course also an indicator of pre-diabetes, higher blood pressure, higher resting heart rate, and other health indicator risks. This body shape can happen to people who don't care about health, but can even happen to people who do care about their exercise and diet. Simply put, being skinny fat is the body indicating that there is a lot of accumulated stress over time. That's why it happens more to middle-aged people, which I can totally understand, right? I am 40 years old. So we've been around a bit longer, so we have more time to accumulate stress from all over the environment. But also, one of the more disturbing trends I'm seeing is that this skinny fat shape is happening more to clients in their mid-20s or early 30s even. And that's bad because this is going to predispose them to more health problems in the future and also makes it harder for them to achieve their health and fitness goals. What I hope that you can understand is stress is multifactorial. There's no one stress source. Food that is allergenic to you is a stress. Food that maybe the restaurant didn't completely wash off all the pesticides, that small amount of toxin, an additional stress. Food that maybe has too much fiber that you can't break down properly, gives you bloating and inflammation in your digestive system, makes you have constipation or diarrhea, that's an additional stress. Emotional stress from our family relationship problems, that's an additional stress. Work stress, financial stress, past emotional traumas, excessive worry, all these are stresses. You can of course add physical stresses. If you've had an infection or disease, that's a stress. If you excessively exercise and can't recover, an additional stress. If you have bad posture all the time, your muscles have to strain extra hard to keep you upright, an additional stress. If you've had surgery or you've had long-term medication use, also another source of stress. As you can see, stress comes from everywhere. And often, stress can trigger weight gain and body fat problems. One of the questions I always ask clients when they come in is, when did you notice that you started to gain weight? So of course, some people gain weight slowly over time, every year, one and a half or two kilos. But there's also people who suddenly gain weight. And for these people, it's very common that it happens after a stress event that triggers it. For example, a death in the family, a divorce, or maybe a sudden change of location or life situation. This kind of life event can trigger a stress response that adds on to that person's stress burden and triggers weight gain and the beginning of the skinny fat look. Now, of course, when you get a stress, the immediate stress is on the local tissue. For example, if you train too much and don't recover well, you may get a muscle tear. That's a stress on the muscle itself. If you eat food that's allergenic or toxic, you will get inflammation and stress to the digestive tract. It's very local. But if you look at it in a bigger perspective, all the stresses accumulate in the body. But if you look at it from a more whole body perspective, 
all these stresses add up. And the place that notices all these stresses is a part of the brain called the hippocampus. It tends to collect all the stress signals from all areas of the body. Mental, physical, digestion, everything. And it collects the stress signals from every part of the body. It could be the stress of an old memory, the stress of a barking dog, the stress of a bad food, the stress of a torn muscle. They all collect the stress signals at the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is part of a feedback system that only has one response to stress. The whole body, no matter where the stress comes from, one response. And that is, as many of you may have heard, the release of stress hormones. That is the only response the body has to this stress situation and stress level. It doesn't matter where the stress comes from. Stress hormones to us are good in the short run. For example, if I'm being chased by a tiger, I definitely want stress hormones. Stress hormones will push blood away from the organs into the muscles so I can run faster. Stress hormones will tense up my arteries so my blood pressure is higher and I force more blood into the muscles. But stress hormones are bad in the long run. If you're always under stress every 10 minutes at work, it means you're always having high blood pressure. It means you're always pushing blood away from your digestion into the muscles. It means you're always having an elevated heart rate. You're getting tense muscles that pull your posture and joints into bad positions. You're getting tense arteries that increase your blood pressure. You're getting poor digestion because blood is not going to the digestive system. Now back to the skinny fat, big tummy, small arms and legs problem. Stress is giving you this problem because another thing that stress hormones do is that they break down muscle and convert it into blood sugar. This is actually protective because if the body thinks it's always under stress 24 hours a day, it's actually a good idea to break down muscle because muscle uses a lot of energy. If there's not enough food, which is a signal of stress, then it's good to have less muscle. You use less energy and you're less likely to die soon. It's been well studied that high levels of stress hormones break down muscle. And more interestingly, it's been shown to break down muscle preferentially where? in the limbs, the arms and legs. This is how high stress gives you high stress hormones which give you breakdown of muscle in your arms and legs. That's how you get the skinny arms and legs. The fat tummy happens because this breakdown of muscle converts into blood sugar which raises your blood sugar and causes fat storage or fat retention in the waist and tummy. So this is how a person who is eating healthy, not eating too much, doing exercise, but is under too much stress can still have a big tummy and skinny arms and legs. So now this person has the worst of all worlds. They're eating a restricted amount, so they're not happy because they can't eat so much, right? They're training a lot, they're spending time exercising, and yet they have the big tummy and small limbs. Now this person feels frustrated, you know, they've tried losing weight or changing their body for a few months and it's not working. So they decide to hire a professional, a personal trainer, a nutritionist or so on. And what does this personal trainer tell them? Oh, you need to join this super intense circuit training program that I have. Oh, you need to eat a low carb diet. You need to eat a low calorie diet. You need to eat more raw vegetables. You need to do intense training. You need to do HIIT cardio. I'll tell you straight up, these methods destroy people who have the stress shape, which is the big tummy, skinny arms and legs, or skinny fat. It's one of the worst things that the fitness and gym industry does to people. Now, admittedly, it will get some people fast results. These methods are very strict and very extreme. And yes, the body will respond. It works in the short term for a certain group of people. People who are younger, fitter, healthier, less stressed, and are usually genetically quite blessed. But this is not the situation with most people who want to transform their body shape or transform their health. They are older, busier, less healthy, and more stressed. You can't use the same methods for these people and have good results long term. Yes, you can use these methods to give a person a 12-week transformation. But what's important is not just the 12-week transformation. What's important is what happens after the 12 weeks. We've had many clients who we had to help recover from these intense transformations. When they go for this transformation, yes, they take nice photos, they look different after 12 weeks. But they may have sleep disturbances. They have poorer digestion. More foods seem to give them digestive problems. They might lose their menses if it's a lady. They might start losing hair, which happens to both men and women. So these clients get rebound weight gain, which is highly frustrating. And then they try the intense method again. 
But by this time, they're already under even more stress from the previous attempt and it works less and less and less. You yourself or your friends may have tried extreme low-carb diets, a ketogenic diet for example. The first time you try, it may give you amazing results. You got increased energy. Actually, that's from the stress hormones, not because the diet is very good. You may get pretty good weight loss. But then, the second time you try it, the result is less. Many people, by the time they try a third time a low-calorie, low-carb diet, the result is poor. Because the body says, hey, that's enough. You've tried to starve me before, I'm not going to respond because I want to stay alive. I'm going to keep that fat and I'm going to break down muscle instead. That's why in my gym, except for extreme cases where the person must lose weight, for example, uh, if they're a martial artist and they need to cut weight quickly, or if they're an actor or actress that needs to go for a photo shoot, we may use more extreme forms of uh, diet or training, but for most of the people, we don't. The reason is we want long-term health and success, not just a transformation that damages them. I know you might be thinking, but I really want fast results. I want to lose weight. I want to be skinny. Okay, I usually ask back, the question when people say this in my classes or in the seminars i say how long do you want to live then of course people answer i want to live to you know 70 80 90 years old okay if you want to live to 90 let's say you're 45 now you have 45 years left what difference does it make if you take eight weeks to lose weight or you take 20 weeks eight weeks lose weight damage yourself because it was too crazy and too intense or 24 weeks, do it nice and slow, let the body do it in a safe, natural way. For people who are not professional athletes, who are not models or actresses who need to be in a photo shoot, what difference does it make? It's not your job, so you don't need to lose weight in 8 weeks. What you want is a plan that you can keep for the next 45 years. And part of coaching, of course, is to explain this to people and why it benefits them. Once, you, once I've explained it to people, I need to help put steps in place to help them get this change and keep it for the long term. So here are 10 things you can do to change your environment, change your stress levels, and by doing that, change your body shape. First thing, very important, sleep quality. When you sleep properly, stress levels are lowered. Of course, there are multiple supplements and sleep aids and so on, but I would say that the biggest one, if you had to choose one, you just do this. It will help many people improve their sleep quality. It's super simple to do, but many people find it hard to implement. And that is to sleep and wake up at the same time. Many of you know that jet lag is quite damaging for your sleep quality and health, right? So let's say you go Southeast Asia to maybe India. That's, you know, three, four hours time difference. Southeast Asia to Europe is six to eight hours. And you know that four or six hours of jet lag is extremely difficult to recover from. It takes almost a week. And it's pretty bad for your health, right? Your sleep is disturbed, your energy level is low. You feel like you're retaining water. You just don't feel good. But did you know that many of you do this to yourself? One day you come back and oh, I feel a bit tired. I sleep at 10 p.m. Next day I feel a bit more energetic or I miss the 10 p.m. and then I don't feel sleepy again till maybe 1 or 2 a.m. So I uh, surf the internet or I watch Netflix. So this is four hours of difference in sleep timing. That's exactly the same as giving yourself jet lag. And of course, all the negative things that come with jet lag come with inconsistent sleep and wake up times. So do this for yourself. I guarantee you, you will have better sleep quality just by focusing on this one point. After you've done this, of course, you can add supplements or you can add, you know, blue light filters and so on. All these things are nice, but you don't get the sleep timing right, you're missing out on a big part of quality sleep. I would go so far to say as sleeping at the same time every day and waking up at the same time is more important than getting the so-called seven or eight hours of sleep. I would personally choose six hours of consistent time versus seven or eight hours of random times. Of course, that's not perfect, it's not ideal, but if you had to choose, the consistency is usually better for most people. So tip number one, sleep quality. Start by fixing a consistent sleep time. Point number two is to do moderate exercise. Now, I know everyone says they want to do moderate exercise, but many people, when they want to lose weight or change their body, they suddenly jump into super intense exercise. They think they're going to do these amazing workouts that are super intense, that are going to leave them lying on the floor. Maybe they'll even puke at the end of a workout and they're going to post all these pictures of super cool workouts on their social media. But this is the wrong way to work out if you want to change your hormonal profile and stress levels. 
Such workouts are likely to be too difficult for you to recover from if you are a big tummy, skinny limbs kind of person. When you're trying to change your body from a high stress situation into a healthy situation, exercise has two main goals. The first goal is to maintain lean muscle. That means you must do strength training. But you don't need to do it until you're so sore you can't move your arms and legs for six days. That's too much. You're probably increasing your inflammation for this period of time and that's raising your stress levels overall. It's not what you want. You want moderation. So strength training with a properly designed program about three times a week for half an hour is a good start for someone trying to change their body shape. The second goal of exercise is to teach all your cells to use oxygen efficiently to produce energy. You have to understand that a healthy cell is a high energy cell. A cell that has a lot of energy because it's able to take oxygen and use it to make high levels of energy is a cell that can do its job really well. If it's a liver cell, it detoxes well. If it's a digestive cell, it absorbs nutrients well. If it's a muscle cell, it contracts well and it recovers well from training. The more efficient your cells are using oxygen, the less they will need to use the inefficient, high stress, anaerobic, which means no oxygen, energy production system. That means overall, the cells will be more efficient, less stressed, and you'll be producing less stress hormone overall. The way to do this is with aerobic training. You want to do aerobic training using only your nose to breathe. Once you use your mouth to breathe, chances are you're getting out of the aerobic training zone. Also, you want to make sure that you don't have that burning kind of sensation in your muscles when you're doing cardio or aerobic training. Once you get the burning sensation, that's the lactate building up, and that's a sign that you're also going out of the aerobic training zone. Stay in the aerobic training zone for about 20 to 30 minutes, three or four times a week, and use your nose to breathe slow and gentle. With this kind of aerobics, you'll be able to increase your cell efficiency of using oxygen and reduce the overall stress levels. So strength training, three times a week, about half an hour, don't need to go to failure and burning sensations every set, all right? Just do a proper program and leave maybe two reps in the tank for every set. Then, for aerobic training, you do three to four times a week, gentle breathing, don't get the burning sensation in the muscle. Tip number three is to take note of the stressors that you have. Now that you understand that stress comes from all over the place, you need to take note of where your stressors are coming from. So for example, if there's a colleague at work who irritates you a lot and you're getting super stressed talking to that person, you may want to avoid them if possible because that will lower your stress levels. If there's a food that you know gives you digestive disturbance, even though you like it, you may want to avoid that. Remember, every bit counts because stress is multi-factor. It may not be possible to lower all the stress from, let's say, environmental pollution or all the stress from work. However, if all the areas of stress, you can drop it by, let's say, 10 or 15% per area, that's still a great improvement. So you've heard from this video the multiple areas that stress can come from. Think about this in your own context and see which areas you can distance yourself from that stress. Tip number four is to reduce the impact of each stressful event. So definitely in life, we're going to have stress events, usually some sort of emotional stress. When this happens, you want this event to affect your stress levels as little as possible. And one of the best ways to do this is to do 10 to 15 really slow breaths. Taking in slowly, maybe five or six seconds, and out super slowly. Don't even take in a full breath of air, maybe about 50% is enough. This kind of reduced breathing will reduce the stress output from that event. This is completely counterintuitive to what people do when they're stressed. When they're stressed, you get fast breathing, short, shallow, fast breaths. Here you want slow, gentle breaths 10 to 15 times. Next tip number five, eat foods that are well tolerated. Digestive tract inflammation is very common and it's a vicious cycle. The more stressed you are, the weaker your digestive tract, the more foods give you problems. So, I'm gonna give you a few foods that most people tolerate pretty well. You can use these foods because likely they will not 
give you digestive tract problems because they are easily digested. So, for protein sources, you want stuff like yogurt. It's soft, it's smooth, most people are okay with it. Even those who have a bit of dairy intolerance can usually handle yogurt. For protein sources, you probably wouldn't take a steak because it's hard to break down, especially since stressed up people eat fast and don't chew. So you would eat maybe seafood or fish, which is easier to break down. So for carbohydrate sources, my suggestions are white rice and potatoes without the skin. Okay, these two tend to be well tolerated along with things like carrots. These carbohydrate sources are unlikely to give you bloating and will be easily processed and not increase the stress burden on your digestive tract. Tip number six, do not do low carbohydrate diets. Now, we've mentioned before how important the liver is for determining stress levels. When you go on a very low carbohydrate diet, like a ketogenic diet, the problem is that it's going to give you low liver glycogen. And remember, liver glycogen is an indicator to the body how much food there is in the environment. If you have low liver glycogen, your body's gonna say, hey, I am not going to activate my thyroid hormone because that would speed up metabolism and I'll need more food. So we will end up with a lower metabolism under a low liver glycogen state because that low glycogen state in the liver is an additional stress to them. And our main goal is not to lose weight fast, our main goal is to change the kinds of stress response that this person has. So remember, low carb diets, you get low liver glycogen, you get low activation of thyroid hormone, you get low metabolism and higher stress hormones. Bad for a person with a fat tummy and skinny limbs. Next tip number seven is no low calorie diets. I know some people have tried to lose weight for a long time and they've been trying a lot of low calorie diets but all they've ended up with is a smaller version of themselves, but still with a skinny fat look. Bigger tummy, smaller limbs. So low calorie diets are also another stress, telling the body, hey, no food in the environment, hold on to as much fat as you can and get rid of as much muscle as you can. So a good guideline for people is nothing below 20 times your weight in kilograms in calories per day. So if you're a 50 kilo woman, you'd probably not want to ever go below 1,000 calories per day. Admittedly, once in a while we do do this for our clients, but those are the people who are in a real rush and maybe it's their job to look good in a photo shoot. So temporarily we might do that for clients with extreme uh, time pressure. But the majority of people do not need to go below this number. Once you're going below this number, there are warning signs in your body that tend to give you a higher stress level. Okay, so tip number eight eat more often. A very healthy person has enough liver glycogen to last many hours between meals. Not a problem, they can keep their blood sugar stable because when the blood sugar drops, liver glycogen will be sent out to balance the blood sugar. But a highly stressed person who doesn't have really healthy habits will tend to have a less healthy liver. So it can't store as much glycogen. This means that if their period between meals is too long, the blood sugar will dip. There's not enough glycogen to bring it back up and this will result in stress hormone release. So to avoid that, you break your meals up into smaller meals with less time between meals, simply because the liver's not as good at balancing the blood sugar. This will prevent blood sugar from dropping too much, which will give you a stress response. We're trying to avoid that. Tip number nine, eat foods that do not oxidize. Oxidation is a reaction where oxygen reacts with things. So at our body temperature, which as mammals, it's quite high, and also our body has a lot of oxygen because we breathe. So high temperature, lots of oxygen, there will be a chance for things to get oxidized. The foods that get oxidized the most tend to be unsaturated fats and also iron. So we want to eat saturated fats, most likely coming from coconut oil, butter, and the fats from animals with multiple stomachs. That means you can eat some of the fat from red meat, like lamb or mutton or from beef but fat from other sources we'd want to avoid. As for iron, the most common source of high iron foods is red meat, but one thing you can do is that if you eat some red meat, you will have some coffee with it because caffeine reduces the amount of iron that we absorb. I have a whole video on coffee linked here. You can go take a look on how to get coffee to be as healthy as possible. If we eat too much foods that oxidize, it places a great burden on the oxidative stress defenses of our immune system. That will activate the immune system, which will increase inflammation and stress hormone levels. 
Finally, tip number 10. You can consider adding herbs that will reduce the stress response. The two herbs that I've had the most success with with clients are rhodiola as well as rilora. Both rhodiola and rilora have been shown to reduce the overall amount of stress hormone output. So that's the final tip. Add some stress-reducing herbs to your diet or supplement plan. So there we have 10 things you can do to get rid of the skinny fat look. Doing these 10 tips in addition to overall healthy exercise programs and nutrition plans will help you change your body shape. It will take some time because you're reversing many years of incorrect lifestyle. But it can be done and we do it all the time with clients. So I hope you can try these 10 tips. I hope they help you. And if you like this video and want more science-based health tips, please subscribe to my channel.